Well, hi everyone, it's Jane of Velocity Vet 08, and what you're looking at is the inside of my sewing closet that I made using Saw Crafters um, closet uh, that she sells. And let me tell you, this is just the cutest design that you could use for a million things. I just happened to decide that it would be a great place for me to store some of my sewing items. I am not a sewer, so um, I have a very minimal supply of things, so a good majority can fit in this little space. Um, so for me, it's fine, you know, for that purpose. You may want to use it for something else if you sew more than I do. As I mentioned in my last um, process video, for me to do um, the uh, vintage Shabby Chic book that I did where I did all the machine stitching, I actually had to go out and buy white and ivory color thread. I didn't even own any. Um, so that's just not an area where I have a lot of supplies, but I do have a few things and this was a great place to keep them because it comes with two little drawers and um, I was able to put like I have some bobbins in there and my um, needles from my sewing machine and also just regular sewing needles. So I put those um, in that side and then in this side I put my needle threaders. So and I actually may have a few more things that I you know can put in there. I think I have a tape measure and some stuff like that. So um, these are super cute. The drawers are just they're a really neat little size. And I do want to show you on these. This is the way that they're actually made to be. Um, this is the the front, and you know you can just use your finger to pull the drawer out. I wanted to put these knobs on here. And so I turned the drawer around. So you can go either way you want to. You don't have to keep that as the front, or you can keep it as the front, you know, and not have, um, you know, a bigger knob. So it's all just in what you choose to do, but you have the option. Um, the drawers fit really nicely as long as you don't paper the sides of them. I would recommend that you only paper the front. Um, if you, I did put paint and um, Mod Podge on the sides and um, after I did that I used beeswax and I just ran my beeswax over it and then I buffed it with a towel and it gave a really nice sheen to it and um, I did the bottom as well you can kind of see it has a sheen that's from the beeswax and that helps it glide um, just a little bit better and so and I, I did have another subscriber who suggested wax paper um, and she's had good luck with that. I don't own wax paper. We tend to use parchment paper here um, at our house. And so, um, but I do have the, the beeswax. So that's what I used. But you, you know, like I said, you can kind of use whatever you have that's handy to you that might make it slide. But I found that it's, it, I mean, they slide like butter. I mean, they slide really nice. They don't stick at all. So, but if I had papered them, I think I would have run into a little problem. So just a little um, advice there. It has a great center shelf in it. Saw's made a really cool design on the shelf. These drawer, doors need to travel, which means this needs to be cut out at an angle here. And that's done. She did do that. And so they do travel nicely. Um, if you if you do put a lot of paint um, and Mod Podge in here, you're going to find you are going to get a little rubbing. Um, I just kind of sanded it down a little bit in those places, and I, I'm fine. Not really any problems. So that's what I did. I've chosen to set this up so that it'll be like open all the time. Um, on the other side, I actually have this door. Um, it's held open with my um, one of my flower clusters that I did on that side. I used the Kaiser Craft needle and thread paper. Um, again, I just love, love, love that paper. It's so, so pretty. And of course, it's perfect for a sewing theme. And it has, you know, the ladies on the front. And I have these handles here. And it looks like... Um, looks like... Um, pattern paper and then on the sides and all the way around here it looks like um, oh like buttons and then on the back it just has like almost like newsprint about sewing <laughs> so I guess you can have a whole newsprint about sewing but that was what I chose to use for the back and I used that on the bottom as well so I thought that turned out um, to be you know pretty cute and I used the gloss Mod Podge on it to just kind of shine it up um, and then over here it has, of course, the buttons. And then I did, I just cut a doily in half 
and did a very similar flower cluster that I did on the top and I'll show you I'll have to raise my camera there's um, this it's a very tall piece it's almost a full 12 inches when I cut my paper for the back I cut it at 11 and 7 8 so it's it's a good you know a full 12 inch piece um, so it is like I said good size you have a lot of room to play and a lot of room to do things which is super super cool um, I wanted to give these knobs a try. I had seen them on um, Etsy and I wanted to give it a try. Um, I do have some of the metal handles that Saw sells in her store. And let me show you some of those that she has because she's got a big assortment. But I'm wanting to use them for a couple other things that I'll be making. Um, one of them is the her lingerie um, her lingerie dresser, which I'll be doing as a design team project, and then also for the dresser that will go to um, one of the winners of the Greyhound giveaway. And so I'll be using some for that as well. So I kind of needed to hang on to a few um, so that I would have them. But I want to show you some of the styles that she has. Um, here is this one, and I only had one left of this, so I couldn't use it but it's a beautiful handle. Um, this is the one I used on my dresser and it's it's gorgeous, really nice. They're, they're very substantial, real heavy, real nice. And this would be the size you would want for this um, closet because this is a really big door. So you would want this one for here. So you'd want to get a package of them for this door and then let me show you she has a smaller size and these are ones I'm saving for the lingerie dresser that I'll be doing like I said as a design team project also and um, these are the ones that you'd want to use for the little drawers at the bottom come back around here like this so if you had this little drawer here this would be the, I can show it to you kind of on this side, even though that divot is there. But you can see that would fit really nicely on here. So these come in a package of three, so you'd be able to pick those up. And then you would have um, the perfect handles for this, I think. These would be the ones that I would use. Um, and like I said, I'm going to use them just for another design team project. And then I'll show you another style that she has, and I only have one of these as well left. So, But it's a real cute style, and this would work very well on the bottom drawers. If this is what you liked, it's, it's not too big for the bottom drawers. So that's an option that's available. And then one other that um, I bought not too long ago, and this is um, really a pretty one as well. And um, again, I think I'm going to use these on the dresser that I do for the Greyhound giveaway. So that's what that looks like. And it's a real nice size. Um, you could get away with it here, and you probably could use it here too. Um, but you're going to need to get two packages of them. They come three in a package. So those are just some different designs that she carries. Um, I don't think she carries this one anymore. I'll show it to you just in case she does, but I don't think she does. Let's see. It looks like this. It's like a, sh a clamshell, I think they call it. And um, that would work good on the bottom. I don't know that it would really work good on the top anyway. But um, I don't think she has it. But the other ones are are really um, great options that I showed you. Um, like I said, especially this one for the for up here. And had I had enough of everything to be able to do my lingerie dresser and my um, the dresser for the um, uh, giveaway, I would have done differently than what I did. But I did want to try these knives out anyway. And I did show how to do it in the video, just in case, in the process videos, just in case you're wanting to try them out. I did have to use um, 3D Crystal Lacquer on them to get a really nice gloss shine on them. Um, and the gloss shine kind of helped, because um, the way that they're done, 
you have to kind of cut a slit in the paper and then fold it over and the gloss shine kind of helps make it look a little bit smoother and um, you, it kind of hides that imperfection a little bit that that creates so it's you know it's kind of a fun thing to do but she does um, she does have wonderful metal handles um, you know that are perfect for this and if you you know it saves you from a trip to the hardware store for these so um, what else did I want to share about this I did use a lot of her flowers that she has in her store and I um, used some sprays that she also has let me put this camera up so you can see what the top looks like there you go um, I use these are all flowers uh, from her store all of these this is a little spray from her store I need to put a little more glue in there I think um, this big flowers from her store these little ones like I said this spray uh, a lot of those items are, are from her store and um, are still on sale, the 40% off, um, because she's getting out of the flower business. Of course, her focus is her wood designing. But for now, they're there and they're on sale. And so it's kind of worth taking you know a look at maybe and picking yourself up some. So um, some of the other flowers, um, to be honest, are just flowers I had in my stash. Um, I'm not even sure where most of them came from. I think um, I know one came off of eBay, this real lovely chiffon one, and I think one of them um, came from um, Annie, who's Miss Garden Grove one, but a lot of them just came from my stash. I think that's a Michaels one, um, and then of course I just took my spools of thread, the you know minuscule amount that I own, and I put them in here. But you could do this so many ways. Let me tell you guys, because I had a couple people like you know I love the closet, give me some ideas on it. Um, you could make this so neat by, you could um, fold up like and make it look like clothes are folded up in here by just folding up little pieces of fabric that you have and you could lay some, um, you could even make them if you want, but they do, you can buy them readily. You can buy them at Michael's um, and Hobby Lobby, um, little hangers and you could put those in there. In fact, I have a couple different types of hangers. Um, one being this style which is a really good size for in there and then I have this style which would also be cute in there you could have both of them so really you know and those just came from local stores I mean those were no no hard thing to find um, so you could make it look like a closet like that um, you could make this a food pantry you could put you could make yourself like little boxes and make them look like cereal boxes and and um, you know you could literally take um, like a little spool like this and make it look like a little can of food um, there's a lot of different things that you could do I mean but storage wise I mean you could put anything you wanted inside here you could make it your place that you keep your alcohol inks or your re-inkers um, things that you don't use maybe all the time but you need a place for. I mean, if I wanted to put um, my um, re-inkers in there, they fit. So plenty of room for that. So I could I could have put all my re-inkers in there. Um, I have the distress stains. I mean, plenty of room. So I could store something like that in there. Um, I have crackle paints. I could have put those in there. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of different things I could have used this to be storage. And then all you have to do is decorate your outside and put, you know, everything you want on the outside and then put inside what you want to have. You know, you could have your alcohol inks in here, okay? And then take this down here and put your blender tool and your felt pads down in the bottom drawer and you would have your whole station for your alcohol inks all in one place. So you could put all your embossing powders in here and then have, um, you could either put your pad for your, um, you know, on the shelf in here, your, um, you know, whatever pad, type of pad that you use for um, stamping for your embossing. Some use Versamark, some use the Tim, the Ranger one. And you could do that. You could even put a few small stamps in here. Um, so there's 
just tons and tons of options um, as far as storage. But I just want to show you how well things fit and how big of things you can put in here. Um, let's see. Yeah, there's there's the limit. Those bottles don't fit. Let me see if. Um, now here's like the Adirondack color wash bottles, and they just fit. So you could get those in there, but it would be really really tight. So there's kind of your limit, so you have an idea. Um, as to what would fit, but like I said, there's a lot that you can get in here and, and have be for storage. I think personally, because um, a lot of people are going to have more sewing stuff than I do, but like I think um, if I hadn't done this, I probably would have stored alcohol inks and then used these bottom drawers for my um, blending tool and for my felt pads. That's probably what I would have done with it um, if it were me, but you know, if it if I didn't have this to put in there. So anyway, I hope that gives you some ideas because this is, you know, just a super neat piece. And if you want to have it upstairs in your house as something beauty, then just, you know, uh, make it something fun that you would have, you know, in a, a closet. And just like if you're somebody who wants to, you know, make it look like a messy closet, you could do that. And so... There's just really loads of endless ideas. You could even have this upstairs in your house and have it storing something in your house that you want tucked away. You know, maybe you crochet or you do a few things like that and you have crochet needles or you have some different things that you would like to tuck away that aren't real big. You could always just kind of hide them in here and have this be real pretty and have it sitting out in your living room and nobody would know that you had some of your things that you use that when you craft and watch TV, you know, because that's different things that you craft and watch TV with than different, you know, than like I have in my, my crafting studio here. Um, so anyway, I hope that's given you some ideas and I hope you've enjoyed um, looking at this one and it was a snap to build nothing to it at all as usual just fell together um, there is a metho meth method methodology method to putting it I can't speak um, to putting it together um, so if you're not real sure I would recommend you watch the video on the assembly I marked it as assembly and the reason for that is is there is an order in how you need to do this these the way what makes this go back and forth is that it has little um, stems on each end of this closet door that go in here and in here and so you need to have these in before you put the top down and you want to have your shelf in there before you put the doors in so there's an order in which you want to put it together so that you have the doors the shelf and everything d at the right place at the right time otherwise you're going to end up you know if you put this on before you put your doors on then you're not going to be able to get your doors on and if you put your doors and all this on but haven't put your shelf in you're not going to have a shelf now you may not want one but if you want one it's not going to happen so you do want to um, do it in the right order and like I said if you have any questions on that go to the video I did about assembly and you can see how I, how I put it together. So I hope that helps and I will see you very soon with another video um, I will do another um, process video and um, it'll start at the end of this month and go into the beginning of next month just like this one did and um, other than that you'll um, I think my next one will be a start to finish video so I'll see you then bye